Hey, what's happening guys? This is Mike Moo, and I'm giving you a first look review of the LG for Ultra HD 4K monitor that is available right now for $688. You can go ahead and please check down my link down below. It is the LG 43UD79-B. I want to first say that this video is not sponsored or endorsed by any company right now. I purchased this on my own for my own testing and review. I'm still within the 30 day return period, so I'm still not quite sure whether or not this monitor might be the one for me. First, let me explain a couple of things. This is a less than $600 monitor for 43 inches at 4K. So with that in mind, you know, there's gonna be a lot of compromises and what you're looking at is full bang on for the buck. All right, so if your budget is $600 and you're looking at a 43 inch 4K TV, chances are this is probably the best choice for you right now. So I just got done doing a lot of technical tests on this monitor and just evaluating it on display quality and uh, color gamut, contrast ratio, brightness, color uniformity, and all that stuff. And overall, my testing gave my particular monitor a score of three out of a possible five uh, overall in a test. And we'll get a little bit more details about that. Now, I've seen some other tests done on by other YouTubers and they've actually received something in the order of maybe four out of five. So there's a little bit of range of variability over there uh, that you probably need to go ahead and consider. So that's why I'm a little bit on a fence on mine. I got it on sale for about $550 and uh, it, so far it's been really great. but. First, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features that are primarily shown here on the screen. All right, so um, it is an IPS display, in-plane switching technology display, and it has a close to full 100% sRGB, which is pretty important for color accuracy. So in my testing, I got 99%, really close to 400, uh, full, full on sRGB. It's got 10 bit of color, which is pretty good, which means it can, sh it can display um, a billion, billions of colors, more than we can probably see with our own eyes. It's got a de decent remote control. I know some people were complaining about this on some of the, uh, the reviews that I saw, but really this is actually a pretty decent quality remote control. And um, I'll do a little bit more of a close up over here so you can go ahead and see what I'm talking about. Let's see. So it has a, well, let me, let me go ahead and grab, uh, let me go ahead and grab another camera here. Uh, the remote control is really useful because it allows you to control the volume, uh, brightness settings up and down really simply and very easily. And it's got a menu button, some arrow keys, uh, it has a specific game mode. So really they're targeting this, um, uh, you know, really smartly for gamers. It's got a nice picture mode uh, button on there. It's got PBP or picture in picture display. You can put on four full on HD displays all at once on there. It's got a audio select, so you can choose between the different audios, uh, uh, audio inputs on there that, um, that you wanna output. So let me just go and show you the, uh, the remote control. And of course, it's got the prominent power button and the very important input button. These are all the most important type of buttons that you want on here. Yeah, some people say it feels cheap, but look, this is a $600 uh, monitor. It's well ergonomically designed. They even include the batteries. It is uh, AA batteries, or was it AAA? I forget, let's take a quick look. So it was actually AAA batteries. It's small, it's black. There's some glossy finish on the remote. It's, it's really, really not bad. And it's extremely useful, especially for the picture-in-picture -picture modes uh, that this monitor actually supports. It's got four different HDMI inputs, of which only two of them uh, support the full 4K 60p. So you're looking at 60 hertz. It's got a screen splitting software that you can download for free, download and use for free. It's got a USB-C monitor input port in there as well, which allows you to not only charge from it, um, so you can actually charge your notebook or your MacBook and power it directly from here, but it also serves as the input of the monitor as well if you want to do that. Plus it's got the display port uh, input, which is also very nice to have. 
There are some problems with using some of the HDMI ports with my Xbox, which is what I did, something that I did um, really early on. And you basically got to play around some of the on-screen settings. Let me see if I can go ahead and show you some of those settings on the screen right now and, and give you an idea what some of those are. But you can do it and it, it, you know, the Xbox may give you a warning, otherwise it's not gonna work out. I gotta tell you, you just gotta play around with the settings to match something similar to what I have um, actually going on on, on, the, uh, on the screen. So here is the LED monitor user gu guide or manual. And uh, it's, it's not actually printed out, so you actually have to go and download this yourself. Um, it's probably on a CD that it, that's included. Um, so it is definitely something that you want to take a look at just to make sure that you have it. So that's USB hub. One thing I want to, one very important thing I want to mention about about this is that there, the outputs and the inputs that you have in there. I know, I know there were some people that were complaining about some weird artifacts showing up on their screen um, and interference. And that is very specifically has to do with, at least in my case, I'll just say in, the, in my case, not necessarily in, in everybody's case. But in my case, there was actually a problem where I was using the USB-C output port and it was overlapping some of my cheaper HDMI cables in there and then producing some weird artifacts on a screen, which then you can see as lines moving up across the screen. And that's something that you can go ahead and adjust and fix yourself. That's not a problem necessarily with the monitor. It's a problem with your cables. So uh, in a case like that, you'll definitely want to get higher quality cables. Don't buy the 99 cent cables. They don't really have much shielding on there. So you're not really going to get the best quality out of them. Um, so that's, that's really one thing you want to watch out for. So all I did to fix that was to basically just unplug the USB-C uh, cable, which is actually a USB-C uh, cable from Apple, and remove that and, and fix up some of the interference going on in, in, in the back with all the cables running in and out. So that's something to consider. All right, so in a box you get a uh, CD owner's manual, a power cord, which is, uh, which is sufficiently long enough. You got the remote control and AAA batteries. There is actually an RS-232 plug adapter, which is not included in US version, but uh, definitely something that allows you to go ahead and configure and control some protocol on the monitor. Most of us aren't gonna be using it, but it's there, okay. Mine actually came with an HDMI cable and DisplayPort cable. It did not include a USB-C cable, and it did include a USB-C to A gender cable. This is the USA version, of course. So if you're in a different country, whatever you get included might be a little bit different. There is some differences in the stands as well. The 43UD79 is the one that's linked down below. There's a commercial version that is this 43UD79T, which as you can see has a different base, which is the T, T style base that you can see down below. Uh, that's not the version that I have, so I didn't really get a chance to play with any of that stuff uh, in there. Installation priority. Um, yeah, so uh, monitor driver. It includes the drivers in there, on-screen controller software, which is actually pretty useful. I'm not going to demonstrate that here uh, because I don't actually have my computer down here plugged in directly uh, into the monitor right now. But suffice to say, it actually works out pretty well. It allows you to configure uh, different layouts and what you tend to uh, generally want to have in those layouts. Very cool, very useful, something that's much improved over other LG monitors that I've actually have and owned in the past, including one I currently do use right now on my ASUS ROG uh, desktop computer, which actually has picture in picture, but nowhere as nice as this. No, nowhere nice as evolved as this. One thing a lot of reviewers don't mention is there's actually a joystick button down below uh, that you know you can really walk up to to go ahead and configure. So that's that's a positive thing. Negative thing is that all the inputs are in the back underneath, which is kind of difficult to get to. So I'll show you right here down the, in the inputs. You got the AC input, RS-232, uh, HDMI 1 and 2 only support 4K 30 hertz. And then 3 and 4 are the ones that support the full-on 4K 60 hertz. Kind of makes you wonder how come they didn't bother making them all 4K 60 hertz, since this, that is one of the headlining features of this, of this monitor for the price. 
It's got a DP Yin, which I haven't actually used yet because I only have this set up in the living room, you know, in the first look. And one of the challenges you're gonna face is that this thing is huge, man. It's 43 inches. Most desks are, are really not configured uh, or set up to be uh, optimal for a 43 inch screen monitor if you're gonna be using it for browsing the web, etc. because there's just, it's just massive. Uh, you really want to be sitting two to three feet away from the screen, uh, in my opinion. Sitting a little bit too close, you know, you kind of have to have to move your head and eyes just all over. Um, yeah, just you, you just need to readjust the way you're going to be using or thinking about using this monitor. So before you even, or, or when you click on the buy button, if you do buy it down below, uh, please use my link. But but when you do buy it, you want to consider having uh, what kind what kind of setup you're going to be having in the office and how you're going to be using it because it is such a dramatically bigger uh, screen than what most of us are used to here, even in in the beginning of 2018. Okay, so that's something to consider. Uh, it's got the five volt, 1.5 amp uh, output of the USB-C connector, which you can also use for your monitor connection. And it's got five volt, two super speed, basically USB three uh, ports in there um, that are one is a one and a half amps and the other is only 0.9 amps, which is basically good enough if you want to charge your smartphone and kind of not get full speed charging on the uh, other 1.5 amp port for your tablet like your iPad. And it's also got a headphone port, which is very useful, even though the speakers built in here are actually really good. They're 10 watt, 20 watts total, 10 watts each. They actually sound fantastic uh, for an Yin monitor speaker, like way better than most of the TVs that you have on there. So kudos for LG for doing that. I really appreciate that a lot. And uh, I should mention that the weight of the, of, of the monitor itself without the stand is about 30 pounds uh, plus another seven pounds probably i'm guessing I, I don't know what the stand is uh for the uh for the stand okay so assembly is really simple you basically just gotta gotta lay it down on a flat surface and you gotta bust out a screwdriver and screw it in so it gives you a little bit of installation instructions there that was it's really not that difficult to do uh, but i do want to say that you want to be careful when you're laying down the screen and also that you're not doing it vertically, uh, just, just lay it down. I put it down on, on a couch or sofa and screwed it in. And you know, that's basically what you need. They give you, they give you some recommendations, basically put it on a table with a soft cloth on the table to go and put it in there. You, you definitely want to get this right. Make sure you screw it in properly. I haven't uh, bought a stand um, basically to hold it up against the table yet. I'm still, basically I've still got to figure out how I'm going to use this monitor. And it's got a cable holder, which I didn't really use because right now I just have it here in the family room just set up right now. It gives you some recommendations on how far away you need to be from everything. The angle adjustment on the monitor is not that great. Basically, it goes forward and back about 15 degrees each. And there's really no um, rotation here on the x-axis. And it doesn't go up and down and the whole thing doesn't rotate as well. So pretty much, if you're just using the, the included stand, that's pretty much it. It has some recommendations on, on installing it on the wall mount, which I'll look into, but it's a 200 by 200 standard wall mount, which I know is pretty standard. So that's something that, uh, that you can do. And again, here's a close look up at the buttons down here. Yep, basically the exact same buttons, so there's really no uh, no major difference. The best connection in, to do this is through the Display Port connection, and not a lot of I want to say not a lot of laptops have this. Yeah, well the new the new laptops now use USB C too, right? So all the testing that I actually did, I actually used an HDMI out, which is actually on both of my notebooks here, which is the MacBook. Uh, retina pro 15 uh, first gen and then i got the samsung notebook 9 pro and i basically did the color calibration testing off the samsung notebook 9 pro so uh that actually worked out there was actually no problem um yeah so let's let's go ahead and get on to some of the tests that i went ahead and did on here well actually we should probably go into the menu system first. So let's let's take a look at the menu system. 
Okay, so the menu, 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 menu. Let's let's switch over to this display. Okay, so the display you're seeing right now is 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 oh, it's scary looking. Let us switch back to this one. All right, so display we have right now. There are some settings in here. Uh, once I press the menu button. There are some quick settings here, brightness, contrast, and I should probably have the overlay of the information here um, from the manual uh, right here, so, so you can see it. All right. So, uh, yes. All right. So the input you, uh, is probably what you're going to be using a lot if you're switching between multiple different inputs, but there are some quick settings on here. What's cool is that the first thing you get when you press the quick setting, I mean, press the menu button, is that you get the quick settings uh, screen on here. And that allows you to adjust the brightness, contrast, and the volume right immediately. But uh, the only thing that is new on here that's not on the remote control directly is the contrast. So I'm not sure why they have that there because it's already fully replicated on the remote control except for the fact that when th this is pretty much just a useful thing for you to when when you're walking up to the monitor or you just want to or you can't find your remote so you can't find your remote control and you're just walking up you're pressing it you can quickly adjust those quick settings so you have HDMI input one, two, three, and four again ports three and four are the ones that give you full on 60p and then you got a bunch of 30p ports uh, that are HDMI 1 and 2. What's the difference? Well, the 60p uh, refreshes the screen at 60 hertz, which is, which is better for action. And 30p is pretty much standard uh, for most of, most of US anyway. So if you're watching TV, you know, mostly 30p is just what can I do it for you. If you're playing video games, I probably Xbox Xbox One uh, X enhanced, blah, blah. Uh, I'd probably switch on over to HDMI 3 or 4. So uh, if, I, if I press the input button, this is what I get. I can choose between the different inputs. You see that? 1, 2, 3, and 4. Display port and USB C. Nice and simple and easy. And it even tells you what it supports up to. Which is which is pretty useful. All right, so pressing the menu button again. Um, so the input settings. Yep, that's simple enough. The underscan is uh, is is only if you're connecting it. It says PC only, so obviously uh, it's supposed to be PC only. This allows you to go ahead and input a signal that's less than 4K, and it'll basically zoom it up so that it fits the whole screen. And I know it says PC only, but I didn't have any problem using this um, through my uh, Sling Studio. Picture by picture and picture in picture setting. So here we can go ahead and pick the different inputs uh, that we want. We can have all four on there at once. This could end up looking really funky, so I apologize for that. Because I have a number of inputs. One of them is the direct input of the uh, Yeah, it's got, well, it's got HDMI 4 and 4 on the left. Um, you can configure this. I haven't really configured any of this yet. So see, I have two of them, two of them side by side <laughs> over on the left hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, adjust this. Picture in picture, right? And the sound settings. Three, two, and three. Well, I'm not sure why I didn't choose one. Let's do the input list. Okay, so the input list is where you adjust things here. Um, Let's make this one number one, right? So that, that could get a little weird. I apologize for that. Number two, three, and four. All right, so 
all four of them on there, yeah, it, it probably is going to get a little weird. So that's how you configure the separate inputs. And I see right now that it is blacking out for some reason on HDMI 1. I'm not sure what is going on there. But suffice to say, there are definitely uh, some bugs or issues and compatibility issues depending on whatever it is that you're putting in there at the same time. So, let's switch this up. Let's do a picture in picture on the left hand side of the screen. All right, so let's do that. And then let's adjust the input sources here. It's having a bit of a problem reading from my HDMI one output for some reason. I'm not sure it's blacking out. There we go. So the quality of the cable is probably going to be a big deal. Uh, when you powered it on, I actually got sick and tired of it telling me, hey, make sure you're using the cable that was included with the TV. So I disabled that warning. And obviously, uh, you'll want to get up-to-date HDMI cables for the 4K display. And I, I didn't. I, I'm using, I know I have a mix of cheap cables in here. And I, that could very well be the problem that uh, is causing this blackout. Yeah. Yeah, it could very well be the problem. Okay. So, uh, let me exit out of here. Let's go back to my main. pretty annoying when you can't when you can't go ahead and configure or exit this so this this is this is the part of the frustrating part I was having in part doing the review and not having um, up-to-date or better cables okay so so get get the better cables uh, don't use your old uh, made for HD you want to get at least HDMI uh, 2.0 specification or 1.4 at least and it does matter, you know, before I, I didn't think that it mattered, but yeah, clearly it does matter. But interestingly enough, it, it, this is definitely a monitor that is much more picky about your cable quality. So this is where you want to invest in better cables. I don't advocate buying, you know, the $60 cables, whatever, just as long as it's certified for 1.4 and above. You should, you should be good. Should be. I might I might change my mind after I actually get uh, get <laughs> get get some cheap 1.4 cables and and see what happens. All right, I I am not getting out anywhere from the screen here, so that's pretty annoying. Okay, um, yeah, it keeps cutting out. Absolutely, it keeps cutting out, and I'm not doing this. This is this is literally it. It is cutting out. So let me let me just let me just go back out of here. Let's let's switch back to Pete. Uh, switch back to regular full on screen mode because that is not working out for me until I get I get proper cables. So definitely get those proper cables. Uh, this is not something that you want to skimp on. Next thing I gotta do is go out and buy uh, up-to-date HDMI cables. None of this um, only made for uh, HD stuff. Okay, let's go back to the menu setting here. All right, so there are some of the input settings there. Picture settings, it defaults to custom but there are a bunch of other picture modes you can do. I did a bunch of these other tests in picture modes just to see what the difference is in the white bounces. It's, it's actually very different. Reader is a lot darker and kind of yellow. It's kind of like when you're using Flux. Photo mode, I suppose it's supposed to be more uh, the most accurate white point at 6,500 and 2.2, 2.1. Cinema mode has the most dynamic contrast, and that's because there's a there's a picture setting that you can adjust to improve the uh, the blacks. 
But when I was doing all my testing, I did not turn that on because I felt like that's kind of cheating. Uh, color weakness is pretty interesting. It allows people with issues seeing colors to distinguish red and green better. Very interesting. Uh, I've never seen that on a monitor before. And you got first person shooter game modes one and two, real time strategy game settings, and then a whole custom, custom game settings, which then readjusts for everything. I have pretty much left this on custom in my, all my testings. These are some of the picture adjustments you can do. I found that to get 200 nits of brightness, I bring this down to 84. I've left the rest of this stuff alone. Uh, let's, let's take a look at, at the super resolution. All right. So the super resolution setting, what that does is, let me, let me bring this, let me bring this up directly on the screen here. What that does is on high, it optimizes picture quality displayed. When user wants crystal clear images, it's for high quality videos or games. Middle is display when user wants images between low and high modes for comfortable viewing, uh, which is good for standard display uh, SD video. Low is uh, quality display when user wants smooth and natural image for slow moving pictures or still images. And off is, is for everyday viewing. Note that because this is a function increase of sharpness, low resolution, it's not we're going to use this function for normal text or for desktop icons. Doing so may result in unnecessary high sharpness. I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, black level offset for HDMI. High keeps the current contrast ratio of the screen. Low lowers the black levels, raises the white levels from the current contrast ratio of the screen. And then there's a bunch of other settings on here. Game response time. Black stabilizer, better visibility in dark scenes. This is probably useful, uh, uh, particularly for PvP games. All right, give you a little bit of uh, visual enhancement. Here are some of the color adjustment settings in there. Now, I want to say during my test, there was one color that stood out that was difficulty in um, in the test that it couldn't quite pick out, and it was it was a shade of blue. So it'd be pretty interesting to see uh, if adjusting this, the hue and the saturation would improve any of that. And then the picture reset mode. Different languages are available. Uh, smart saving feature. I'm not sure about that. I usually turn that off because I want the best quality. Display port one or two. Whether or not it makes a sound when it powers on and off, that's actually kind of useful. I think I'm actually going to use that, strangely enough. Yeah, I'm going to turn on the buzzer. This way I can tell whether or not I actually turn on the monitor. So I'm going to go down over here to settings. Yeah, the buzzer is on. Okay. Quick charge function, whether or not USB port 1.0 uh, USB port one port has quick charge function on, which I hope is like the, the uh, QC one or two or three, which I have not tested. And then on screen display lock, there's a bunch of other troubleshooting things, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and then a bunch of factory presets modes, and the timings. All right, we're going to jump over to my other computer right now, we're going to take a look at the tests that I did. Okay. So um, here are the actual tests that I performed. So here, here are the basic monitor ratings. It's got the full on gamut range, which is, scores a full on five out of, out of five because it, it covers sRGB, pretty much does. Tonal response only got three and a half. White point was not fully tested properly. I'm pretty sure this would get a full on four to five. Contrast ratio only got two and a half. That was really disappointing. And that is because that's also because I didn't turn on the dynamic range. Number one, number two was that I was doing this test in the living room, which during the afternoon, which is really bright. Color uniformity was a little low. I only got three out of five, and that's because the colors were all over the place on the corners of the screen. Color accuracy is really high, four and a half. Um, overall rating only got a three out of a five. I'm going to have a link down below where you can download a full-on copy of this report for you to go ahead and check out. 
but let's look at this again. Um, sRGB got a full on uh, 99%. S, uh, Adobe RGB only got 75%, which is obviously not the best, but you know, to get on the full on RGB on a smaller screen, let's say in a 20 some inch range, it's gonna run yourself already 700 bucks. And that's not even Ultra HD. Okay, display gamma. These were the actual measured display gammas at 1.8. This is really close, very close to exactly what it says it would do. Yeah, see? Display 2.0, 2.2, also really close. I should mention that in, in the actual, um, in the actual In the actual box, there's actually a display quality assurance thing. And I'll show that right here. And it actually has a report, a full-on report, that lets you know that it tested the gamma, tested color temperatures, and it tested the deltas between the color differences. And it all goes up to spec, according to LG's testing. Yeah, this is all according to LG testing, of course. Okay, here display contrast. Again, the, these will all be down below for you to go ahead and download and view yourself and you can compare it with your own monitor or monitors if you have such a setting in here. This is pretty interesting. At the reader setting, it only has 89.3 nits of brightness. Photo mode is 254, cinema is 295, which is the highest dynamic. Uh, contrast at 430 to one. Dark room 138, dark room two is what 120. Dark room two at 120 is usually the recommended viewing uh, in a dark room for crit color critical. So it's interesting that that is a dark room setting too. Color weakness is at 267. I'm not colorblind, so I can't tell how useful or effective this is. My dad is though, maybe I can get him to test this out. And the rest of these other settings, the brightness is about the same. Uh, first person, Shooter game one, game two, real-time strategy, and games were all at 253 uh, nits of brightness. What's very interesting to me that the contrast ratio is really only the best at the cinema, um, cinema setting, which is really highly d dynamic. Here's where, uh, here's, here's the part that is really kind of disappointing. Okay, so there's a lot of reviews out there that go ahead and point out that there are some people who have problems with, with you know, darkness on the sides of the screen. Yeah, yeah, it's true. There is. Um, it is. Does it really bother me? No, not not that much. I mean, considering the price of the monitor. But here, take a look at the screen uniformity here. Top left-hand corner is pretty damn different from the rest of the other corners. Top left-hand corner only. Look at that. That's color uniformity for brightness. That's quadrant number one. Look at how far off that is. The color, man. That's, that's pretty bad. At least the other three corners are, are you know, better. But, but that, that's at 100% brightness. Similar results at 83% brightness. Does a little bit better at 67% brightness. But I should also note that, uh, okay, so I'm running the latest firmware on a monitor. The there's a PWM issue with this, a pulse width modulation, which is, which is a cheaper way to adjust the brightness of the monitors. Some people are highly susceptible to it. I was for a period of time when I was wearing my contacts. Once I switched back to glasses and I got more sleep, it didn't bother me as much, or maybe because I don't expose myself to the monitor uh, for really long periods of time during the day now. So I, I I haven't received or I haven't perceived any major PWM setting issues with this because I usually have, when I, when I had the monitor uh, throughout most of my testing, I had it set at 100% brightness. So the lower the setting you have, the more effect uh, I heard that people were having. Again, I'm not sensitive to this. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt other than the fact that if you are highly sensitive to PWM, 
you're not going to find anything but PDM, PWM issues with this um, at anything but the brighter settings, usually at 80 something uh, and above. So I like to operate this, mo this monitor at 200 nits brightness in the environment that I'm using right now, which, which means it's a brightness of 84. No issues for me whatsoever there. Um, okay, so that's all I'll say about that. There's a lot of other people complaining about, about this, but it, it's never been an issue uh, for me. Uh, luminous uniformity for brightness. Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty much not that great either. In this, in this, in this part of the test, uh, the top right hand corner is really you know out there, and the middle is is as well. But but that's that's quite a big, bit difference. Uh, the difference in the maximum uh, in, in, in the brightness. Look at that. This is kind of what you expect in a cheaper monitor and particularly in a large size screen. You know, something's got to give. And these are some of the compromises that LG had to do. In real on day-to-day -day use though, it doesn't bother me that much because I don't have anything super awesome to compare it to. You know, if I'm just looking, okay, so right now I'm looking at at, at, at the screen, which is just below the camera. And yeah, I do see that. It is definitely brighter in, in the middle area. And then there's a little bit of a darker area up top. So would that bother me day to day? That, that's kind of difficult to say. If I'm using this regularly just as a TV for the Xbox, watching videos, that's not gonna bother me as much as I'm looking at a straight on white screen here of a browser of a video that I just did and I clearly see that difference um, here on the screen. Okay, so enough said about that. Color accuracy, uh, it, it's pretty good except for this one bluish cyan color down here. And that is like way off, way off. Everything else looks pretty good except for that one particular color. So that is 4.17 delta, which is actually still below what they consider to be pretty good at five delta. This is at 4.17. Uh, the average is less than one delta, which is pretty good. Uh, actually very similar to what their tests say, which I think, uh, looking back at this paper, yeah, overall, less than one delta, but this is, this is a, uh, this is overall pretty good. And, th and that's how we ended up with the monitor rating here. So it's only three stars. Are there better 43 LG 43 uh, inch monitors of the same exact model that score better? Yeah, yeah. I actually saw. Um, I I don't remember the name of the YouTuber. I was actually just watching in the background, and he did some tests on here using the same exact tools that I'm using, which is Spider Five uh, Elite, and I have that somewhere around here somewhere. Anyways, so I use the same test. To, to do uh, you know all these tests and his scored higher than mine and I see that there are definitely some differences between the LG 43 inch monitors and that's true of just just basically mass manufacturing just overall uh, the quality control uh, tests as you can see there's there's really only three major tests that they do here they don't really test much for screen uniformity uh, or if they did then maybe um, maybe they would have produced something uh, more expensive and at maybe double the price for improvements in those areas. Okay, so it comes down to this. Do I recommend this monitor? Yeah, if I have 550, less than $600, yes, I do recommend it. It is not a solid super recommend because there are PWM issues for some people, not for me. I'm okay with that. And if you're really doing color critical things, the color accuracy is there, but the brightness and the color differences on the edge of the screen could be all over the place. You are still better off spending $700 on a small 20 inch monitor, uh, maybe an ultra sharp or one of the more expensive color accurate monitors. There's a reason why the price is so high on that. But for me, I think this is, this is good enough for uh, Xbox gaming at 4K, which is pretty good. Uh, light use of the 4K monitors for critical work, maybe just for evaluating for color, this is just gonna be better because it's full on 100% sRGB. Not so much for critical work though. Uh, I think I'd stay away from this for color critical work. But at $550 plus tax or $600, does that really matter? Well, pretty much only you could answer that question. For me, I'm still on the fence because I know that there is a better LG 
uh, a monitor in, in, in the same level of LG 43, same exact models that are brand new, I know that there's a better one out there. But for mine, it scores a little bit low on the uh, color accuracy for me, which matters for me as a photographer and someone that produces content and videos. All right, long, long, long video. I hope the, this <laughs> rambling was useful to you. Uh, please, please, please click that like and subscribe button and um, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.